uh, what Professor Hemanti mentioned. In fact, when, uh, by, uh, my name is Jayant Vijay Singh. I'm from Rainforest Protectors. By the time I asked for the mic, uh, you have not uh, expressed your opinion on that. So it's you. I think half of what I wanted to say you addressed. Uh, when Dr. Bonnevaradhan was talking about uh, the uh, Mahavali lands being uh, offered to investments uh, for agricultural and other aspects, one key question I and a lot of other people had is that there were investors who are interested in uh, ecotourism ventures and other ecosystem uh, uh, improvement uh, uh, projects that they had. But unfortunately, when they have approached Mahavali, Mahavali has said that uh, this is specifically for uh, agriculture only, and you can only do uh, certain crops that they have mentioned. Uh, I have the four sectors that was offered, Madhiri Giriya, Girandaru Kote, Kandakadu, and Mutuel. And in addition to that, there have been several other places that have been offered to uh, big investors. So when these uh, international organizations for migrants were talking about the opportunities of uh, people who are coming down to the country and investing, uh, them investing in these zones, practically, and from what I know, that's impossible. And it has not happened and it has not going to, it is not going to happen. And one of my friends who went to uh, see some of these lands, send me the pictures of some of these lands that are being offered and its ecosystems and uh, some of these lands that are elephant uh, transit zones and elephant habitats and have natural ponds, lakes and all of that and well-grown forest cover and all of that. So what he was saying is that he said, I was interested, Mahavali took us there, but as an investor, I don't feel like investing there simply because he was so conscious of the environment that he felt if he, had, if he had done any agricultural projects there, he would have been impacting the whole ecosystem and whole biodiversity uh, in that area. Because if you look at, now I might be taking a few extra minutes here. If you look at when the Mahavali was uh, implemented, what it did is like it took out a great number of probably hundreds of thousands of acres of uh, forest in the central hills and in the surrounding areas, which was giving us the rain, which created rain. So in, in to, just to compensate the forest cover loss, now if you look at the, the latest being the Moragahakan, the Moragahakan that took, took away about 12,000 acres of uh, forest cover in the hills. So uh, to compensate that we had the national parks, the, the floodplains to uh, Madru and all that being created. And then we had the other Mahavali reserves uh, that were there in these areas. Now, what we are doing is we are using all these lands that were allocated just to compensate the forest cover loss of, loss of Mahavali, again, for developmental activities. Now, in 2008, when the uh, forest cover assessment was done, uh, we calculated all these as forest cover. And that is how we arrived at 29.6. And now uh, NDC says we are going to go for 32%. And of course it has come down with the splendor of wisdom speaking of 30%, uh, probably a certain uh, percentage that we will be increasing. But the problem now is that with the utilization of these Mahavali reserves, Mahavali forests for developmental activities without giving due consideration to the biodiversity, forest cover, and other ecosystem services, how will we achieve these uh, targets we set out? So I think uh, we will have to really look at, uh, like Professor Hemanti said once again, we have we need to 60... quickly wind up your question very in a point you can't I understand. Do. I understand. Like I said, this is very important. I think this is very important for everyone yeah, to understand. Can you concise and quickly give yeah, your point? I will try and do my best. 62% uh, of our lands are agricultural lands. I'm not saying it. Ministry of Agriculture is saying. So if 62% of our lands are agricultural lands, I think it is up to, up to us to see how productively we could use the existing lands and probably try and introduce more uh, uh, enhanced, technologically advanced agricultural mechanisms and improve productivity and look at pre-harvest and 
post-harvest loss, which is also a big concern. So I really invite a forum of this nature, uh, speaking of climate resilience and adaptation and addressing climate change and all of that. And it's an international, uh, uh, we have international commitments and local commitments. So I hope that we will seriously be talking about these topics and see how we can better plan uh, all of what we are doing, which are impacting us uh, badly. Thank you. Before we speak, yeah, uh, if the panel has any responses. Just to make sure. Uh, have mentioned that they will make uh, what is called solar powered uh, elephant uh, repulsing fences. And other thing is this particularly being, uh, though I am a climatologist now, I started my career as a soil scientist 20 years back. And I know that these soils in the area of the Kandakadu area is soil is non-calcic brown soil, which is very sandy, which has a very low potential of poor agriculture because very high percolation rate. And the best land use for the non calcic brown soil is the either uh, grasses or paddy. And but for this particular area, Mahal system being like Motuella and the Singapore and Kandakadu, uh, they are not going to give water for paddy. So, best land use for my understanding is going for pasture and livestock. 